Thanksgiving was always a beacon of warmth and joy in my life. A time when the aroma of turkey and pie enveloped our cozy home, creating an atmosphere of familial bliss. But when I turned 16, a Thanksgiving incident occurred that forever altered my perception of this cherished holiday. That year, high school had become a battleground not due to academic challenges, but because of the relentless bullying from some classmates. What started as a minor disagreement spiraled into exclusion and mockery, tainting my daily life with dread. I yearned for Thanksgiving's respite, to indulge in my grandmother's culinary delights, and to escape the high school drama, even if just for a few days. I also longed to reconnect with my father. His demanding schedule had erected barriers between us, leaving many unspoken words and shared moments hanging in the balance. The bullying at school compounded my sense of isolation, making the need to confide in him even more pressing. Thanksgiving at my grandmother's house was supposed to be our sanctuary a small gathering of loved ones, including my parents, younger sister, uncle, aunt, cousins, and of course, my grandmother. It was a time of mischief for the boys in the family, sneaking bites of turkey in a playful ritual that both annoyed my mother and amused my grandmother, who always turned a blind eye sharing a conspiratorial wink with me. The dining table scene was picturesque, with soft music and the chandelier's light casting a serene glow as my father led us in prayer. It was a moment of collective peace, a brief suspension of life's chaos, until an abrupt bang at the door shattered our tranquility. The intrusion was so unexpected, so jarring, my father hastily concluded the prayer, perhaps not wanting to leave any divine plea unfinished. The tension in the room escalated as my father and uncle approached the door, peering through the window to see a man outside, his presence emanating hostility and confusion. This man, demanding and aggressive, seemed to be searching for someone he believed had wronged him. His shouts punctuating the night with threats. The fear in my father's eyes was something I had never witnessed before. It transformed him from the pillar of strength I had always known into a statue of vulnerability. The silence that followed was oppressive. Every household creak whispers of the night seemed to echo the intruder's menace. My uncle's readiness to defend, armed with kitchen utensils, contrasted sharply with my father's stunned stillness. It was a tableau of fear and defiance, a stark departure from the Thanksgiving celebrations of my childhood. The incident marked a turning point, not just for that evening, but for my understanding of family security, and the unpredictable nature of life. As we awaited the outcome, the impending sense of dread was palpable. A stark reminder that the sanctity of our family gatherings could be so easily disrupted by the outside world. The unsettling quiet that followed the initial confrontation was as unnerving as the prior commotion. Each silent moment seemed laden with the threat of further upheaval. This dread soon materialized when the man returned, this time wielding a raw turkey on a tin foil tray, a bizarre and menacing sight that seemed plucked from a macabre tableau. The audacity of setting a fire in our family's courtyard, a place of innocent play and joy was a stark desecration of our cherished Thanksgiving traditions as the man ignited the turkey, transforming it into a grotesque pyre. 
The resulting shadow cast a pall over what had once been a haven of warmth and festivity. The man's actions, driven by some unfathomable vendetta, seemed intent not just on physical destruction, but on eroding the very fabric of our familial bonds. His furious cries, laden with a sense of betrayal and retribution, resonated with a chilling echo that lingered in my mind, a haunting reminder of the evening's surreal turn. My father and uncle, propelled by a mix of shock and resolve, sprang into action to douse the flames, using whatever means were at their disposal, including baking soda. Yet, even as the physical threat was quelled, the psychological scars remained, a somber testament to the fragility of our sense of security. The subsequent arrival of the police brought little solace, as my father recounted the night's harrowing events and revealed the underlying conflict, a legal battle with the man, now identified as an adversary entangled in a bitter divorce case. This revelation added layers of complexity to the incident, suggesting that the attack was not random, but fueled by personal vendettas. The drive home was shrouded in a heavy silence, a stark contrast to the joyous anticipation that had marked our journey to my grandmother's house. Our home, once a sanctuary, now seemed tainted by the night's events. Every corner a reminder of the man's rage. The attempt to find solace in sleep was futile, as the night's terror replayed endlessly in my mind, a relentless montage of fear and flames. But the nightmare was far from over, awakened by a strange light. I was confronted with a sight even more horrifying than my darkest dreams. The inferno had followed us home, its voracious flames encircling our house with a ferocity that mirrored the man's earlier wrath. In a panic, I rushed to alert my parents, the reality of our situation crashing down with the weight of the encroaching fire. Surrounded on all sides, we were ensnared in a literal and metaphorical blaze, a dire reflection of the turmoil that had been simmering beneath the surface of our seemingly idyllic family gatherings. In the wake of the harrowing incident that marred our Thanksgiving, the semblance of normalcy seemed like a distant memory. The subsequent year brought its own set of challenges, particularly with the passing of my beloved grandmother Mary just a month before the holiday. Thanksgiving was her domain, a time when her culinary prowess shone brightest, leaving a void that we were determined, yet uncertain, how to fill. The family decided to honor her memory by recreating her cherished recipes, a tribute to the love and tradition she instilled in us. As we gathered in my grandmother's kitchen, the air was thick with nostalgia and the subtle pressure to uphold her legacy. My mother's struggle with the oven temperature was the first sign that this Thanksgiving would be different. The persistent reset to 325 degrees, despite her efforts to adjust it to 350, seemed like more than a mere appliance malfunction. It was as though my grandmother's spirit was guiding us, ensuring we adhered to her precise instructions, a notion that brought both amusement and comfort to our grieving hearts. The incident with the oregano only reinforced this feeling, the accidental spill, preventing what would have been a deviation from the original recipe, felt like a gentle reprimand from beyond, a reminder of my grandmother's meticulous nature. It was these small, seemingly 
seemingly coincidental occurrences that wove a thread of her presence through the preparation. A silent affirmation of her enduring influence on our family traditions. My uncle's struggle with the potato peeling and my stepdad's subsequent mishap with the knife were further testament to the day's unusual turn. The knife's unyielding sharpness coupled with the unexpected accidents suggested a preference for authenticity and perhaps a hint of my grandmother's humor dictating that the mashed potatoes retain their skins in true rustic fashion. Despite the series of kitchen mishaps, I remained skeptical of attributing these events to anything supernatural. To me, they were merely coincidences, albeit strangely fitting ones, that added layers to our first Thanksgiving without the matriarch of our family. Yet, in the warmth of shared laughter and the familiar aromas that filled the kitchen, I couldn't help but feel a connection to the past, a sense of continuity that bridged the gap between memory and reality, between absence and presence. The playful spirit of what we initially thought was my grandmother's presence took a darker turn as the evening progressed. The day had been filled with light-hearted anomalies that brought comfort and a sense of connection to the past, especially for me as I navigated the complexities of a blended family. My stepsister had become an integral part of my life, a beacon of happiness amidst the upheaval of my parents' divorce. Our bond transcended the typical sibling relationship providing a foundation of support and understanding that I had come to rely on. As the day's festivities wound down and the house settled into a quiet lull, I sought solace in the company of my stepsister. Our rendezvous in the laundry room of the basement was a stolen moment of peace, a chance to reconnect away from the watchful eyes of our family the anticipation of being together, even just to hold hands and share a hug, was a comforting reprieve from the day's earlier events. However, what began as a moment of innocent connection quickly escalated into a harrowing ordeal. The sudden activation of the washer and dryer was startling enough, but the rapid escalation to a dryer explosion and ensuing fire was beyond anything we could have anticipated. The flames that licked the ceiling and the smoke that began to fill the room transformed our refuge into a trap. In our panic, the door that had offered an escape now became an insurmountable barrier, seemingly sealed by an unseen force. The fear that gripped us was palpable. A stark contrast playful hauntings we had joked about earlier in the day. Our calls for help, muffled by the thickening smoke and the roar of the fire, seemed futile. The situation was desperate, a life-threatening emergency that required immediate action. The realization that we might not be saved, that our cries might go unheard, was a terrifying prospect. The urgency of our situation was compounded by the growing intensity of the fire, a clear and present danger that threatened not just us, but the entire household. In those moments, the bond between us was both a source of strength and a poignant reminder of what was at stake. Waiting for the culmination of our Thanksgiving celebration with the first cut into the perfectly prepared turkey. However, the atmosphere at the table was far from the usual joviality we were accustomed to. The incident in the basement had cast a long shadow over our family, altering the dynamics and introducing an unspoken tension that seemed to thicken with 
every passing moment. John's unusual quietness and sudden bursts of cryptic laughter only added to the uneasy atmosphere, creating a sense of apprehension about what he might have planned. His behavior was out of character, even for him, known as he was for his pranks and unpredictable antics. The whole family was on edge, wary of what could possibly unfold, especially given the recent traumatic events. When John finally spoke, his words were enigmatic, hinting at something imminent yet undisclosed, which only heightened the sense of foreboding. His cryptic message, oh, you will know soon, left us all more anxious. Pondering the nature of the impending revelation or act that seemed to amuse him so, despite the underlying tension and the scars of the recent past, we tried to focus on the moment at hand, the traditional cutting of the turkey, a symbol of our family's unity and the joy of Thanksgiving. The aroma of spices filled the room, a swiftly, and within moments, the sound of sirens filled the air, signaling the arrival of help. The gravity of the situation had escalated rapidly. From a moment of anticipated familial bonding over a Thanksgiving meal to a horrifying standoff, fueled by John's inexplicable and dangerous act. As we restrained John, struggling to comprehend his descent into madness, the emergency responders burst through the door. Their quick assessment of the scene led to immediate action, separating John from the rest of us and beginning the process of decontamination and medical evaluation for each of us who had ingested the tainted food. John's eyes, once familiar and filled with the light of brotherly jest, now mirrored a deep-seated turmoil that none of us had recognized. His laughter, which had previously signified playful mischief, now echoed ominously as a manifestation of his fractured psyche. The paramedics administered first aid and assessed our conditions, ensuring that the poison's effects were mitigated as swiftly as possible. Meanwhile, the police officers who accompanied them took John into custody. His resistance waning as the reality of his actions began to dawn upon him. The ride to the hospital was a blur of flashing lights and hushed conversations among the medical personnel. My thoughts were a tumultuous mix of concern for my family's well-being and disbelief at the turn of events. The Thanksgiving that the harrowing experience at the hospital, where we underwent treatment to counteract the poison, was a stark reminder of how quickly joy can turn to terror. Lying there, amidst the beeping of monitors and the hustle of medical staff, the question of John's motives loomed large. Theories ranged from a severe psychological break to a malevolent desire to dominate a long shadow over what was once a cherished family gathering. The incident not only marred our thanksgiving, but also left an indelible mark on our collective psyche. The memory of that tainted meal, the fear, and the betrayal we felt, has ingrained itself into our consciousness, turning what should have been a dream into a recurring nightmare. The realization that the source of such malice was one of our own, someone we never suspected, was perhaps the most chilling aspect of all. Moving forward from that day, our family dynamics irrevocably changed. Trust, once given freely and unconditionally, now came with reservations and doubts. The bond we shared with John was shattered placed by a wariness that permeated our interactions. The very foundation of our family, 
built on love and mutual respect, was now riddled with cracks of suspicion and fear. This ordeal taught us a harsh lesson about the complexity of human nature and the hidden depths of darkness that can reside within those closest to us. It was a reminder that the face of evil is not always recognizable, not until it reveals itself in actions that are beyond comprehension. Our Thanksgiving tragedy became a somber reflection on the fragility of relationships and the unpredictability of the human mind.